Hey, what's up, guys? It's Ozzy Guillen Jr. here with La Vida Baseball, and we are honored to be joined today by Mr. Cartoon himself. What's up, Mr. Cartoon? What's happening? I'm right here, man. Um, I'm so I'm su- I was super excited when uh when Jesse uh told me that I would be interviewing you because yeah. I've always been very intrigued by the culture. That's why I had all the questions beforehand. But sure. tell me real quick, you know, what got you into this world of of the art, the graffiti, the tattooing. Give me a little bit of some background on how you got, you know, connected to this amazing world. Yeah, you know, growing up here in Southern California, uh, hip hop came in in the mid eighties, you know, from the East Coast. And we out here, we got, we loved it and we embraced it. You know, we already had like Chicano culture. We had like uh, popping and certain things going on. But uh, when the graffiti hit, like wild style graffiti, we, we definitely jumped on it. You know, we got the Star Wars book and we went nuts and we started making our own style, our own flavor, mixing West Coast with the East Coast bombing style. So you've said before that um, the streets, you know, they were rough back then, obviously we all know that, but that art kept you away from getting into into big trouble. Tell me a little bit sure. about how that how that helped you out out in the LA, because obviously we, we, know, we know how tough it was back then. For sure. In the 80s, gangbanging was an all-time high. Um, a lot of those guys, you know, they're not always scary. You know what I mean? They got slick mouthpieces and, you know, it, it, you can be attracted by that lifestyle, you know? So being around it, going to high school and all that, you're going to be immersed in it. Fortunately for me, my old man kept me real busy. Uh, got me in a lowrider culture as a kid. And uh, he didn't say, hey, you can't do this. You can't do that. Don't do this. He said, hey, you should do this. So he maybe a little bit washing brain he pushed me into custom culture with the automotive paint and upholstery and murals and gold leaf and and i, I became obsessed with it um when do you think obviously being a guy that obviously was in the like the beginning days of street art and something that completely has gone mainstream now when did you see that shift yourself and when did you say okay now i think we're getting into the mainstream stuff i think when Pac, that's a good question when, when Pac started to get his tattoos out to the world, started taking his shirt off. And here's a celebrity, you know what I'm saying? And then you start to see pro ball players getting tattoos now. Wait up now, you know, prior to this, it's been cholos, it's been gangsters or strippers, people that go to jail. Like this is a, a, a black guy in a, in, a, in, a, in a way of our culture, right? At least our parents would look at it that way. So to see these ball players, these are successful millionaires, they're coming up and they're wearing their tattoos out proud that's when i started to see definitely things were going to change what was your first tattoo of course it was my name you know i got my name cartoon on my arm when i was a kid so it was a cartoon it said cartoon okay it said cartoon okay that makes sense okay that so you've had that so you've had that you've had that name for a long long time then sure i've had it since i was about 15 16 years old wow and i as i grew older i Turned into Mr. Cartoon. But Mr. Cartoon, would, you and your adult, adult team. <laughs> we would put Mr. when we were 18 because we, we wanted to be older than we were. You know, yeah. I mean, we, we would put sir or doctor or some shit in front of our name, you know. That is amazing. That is amazing. And do you still get artwork done on yourself or have you slowed down? You know, I'm pretty I'm pretty covered, you know, and mm-hmm. my hands were like my last uh frontier, my neck and my hands and uh that was pretty much my last one. My kids' names, my wife's name, you know. So I pretty much rounded it off with that. I let these youngsters come in here and endure the pain now. Yeah, enjoy the. I, that's my question. So, like your tattoos, did you start off with like a like an idea of what you wanted it to look like at the end, or it, you just went with the? You know, obviously your kids were born. You got one. How did that? How did how did that uh, decision come for you? You know, when you start getting tattooed, you want to tell the story of your life. This is the opportunity for you to showcase everything that you've been through and kind of uh, show pride in your community, your heritage. And uh, that's what I did. I, I stuck with the icons, you know, the the clown, the, the crying eye of the woman, you know, uh, a Virgin Mary in the sky, you know, these these elements that are, are icons in, in the tattoo community or in our culture, you know, Latino culture pretty much uh, period embraces all those things. We take a little bit of Catholicism and we mix it a little bit with street graffiti and then we, we stir it up with some old English lettering and script and bam, you got a sleeve done. That's amazing. So you grew up loving hip hop, obviously, you know, you were now, but you now you get to not only tattoo, you know, amazing rappers, Method Man, Eminem, Cypress, Pusha T, 
but you're also part of the culture. So these guys are seeking you out. Tell me how that's been, you know, that whole full circle has come around now that you're, you know, you're mainstream in that culture yourself. Well, it took a lot of work, you know, prior to uh, the internet, we had to uh, go and like visit people and like I would have to go to New York, I would go to Chicago and I would, I would paint live in front of people and I would uh, try to surround myself by, by people that uh, I looked up to, you know, so uh, it's been a process, you know, 20 year process of just hammering daily. You have a vision of yourself, you see yourself there and you just push towards that. And you ask yourself questions like, how am I going to get there? When am I going to get there? Who's going to help me get there? And you just chip away at the stone. So you created the iconic 1955 Roberto Clemente card. How was it to draw such an iconic Latino player? And how did you decide to pick him out of everyone that you probably had an option to pick? For sure. I mean, of course, he's an icon. You know, he died way too young. And uh, you can say that name and, and people already know uh, the work ethic. You know what I'm saying? Or they know about the, the legend. So um, I took him and uh, growing up in the harbor area of LA, I went to San Pedro High School and we were the Pedro Pirates, you know? So we all wore P caps. So the whole city of San Pedro was P caps. So when it came time that P caught my eye, you know, guys get obsessed with the pirates out here too. Um, somewhere along the line that black and gold's in our blood. Like mm -hmm. I come from a car club called Pegasus and we wear P caps. So it's a big part of LA culture that any city starting with the P wears a P cap, a Pacoima or Puente, anywhere out here that has a P, so a uh, Pomona. So those guys that embrace other teams from other places here in the West Coast. How long was that process to kind of obviously, you know, reinvent the baseball card and keeping your, your sense of the artistry, but making it cool and mainstream because it came out amazing. How long Thank was that you. whole process from the beginning? Well, you know, I, I, I get it. And then I study the original car that's, you know, worth so much and it's so famous. And I don't want to like mess that up. Right. So mm -hmm. I kind of just wanted to take that, remix it, if you will, and rewrite his name in my style and kind of like update that part, but keep the rest looking real classic uh, to make the Pirate fans proud or any Roberto Clemente you know, fans proud. Yeah, so that's my so, goal when I go into it. That's amazing. So for you, you obviously told me before we got on that you were a Dodgers fan. You grew up a Dodgers fan. Sure. Um, have you gotten a chance to tattoo any ball players, any baseball players? Have they had the honor to work with you? Well, you know, it's funny that uh, that you say that. D. Gordon was probably the first uh, Dodger that I tattooed when he was playing for the Dodgers, and uh, and also. Um, uh, my boy, Carl Crawford. Nice. So, um, you know, it's a trip to to hang with those guys and pick their brain a little bit. And uh, we have similar things in, in common. You know, I'm an artist, so obviously I'm horrible at sports. <laughs> but uh, I admire uh, talent and I admire work ethic. And, and I kind of um, try to see what I could take out of that. But uh, those guys are really cool people. Um, CC Sabathia has been able to come through. Um, you know, so they claim, yeah, that's awesome. So they can claim you then, because I know, I know amongst baseball players, that's a huge thing when you can get an artist that you admire and you respect, you know, sure. if you go to LA, you look for guys, you know, obviously you guys are so busy to get time to get work done. So I know it's a big thing in the baseball culture, uh, you know, the tattooing and getting Tiny. tattooed by, by, by great artists. Yeah. And they got to time it too, because after mm -hmm. they get the tattoo, they can't really, you know, go out there and rub up against other players and all that. Uh, so they have to time it really good. Uh, Dallas Keiko came in. He was really cool from the Astros. Dallas is a, a super humble guy, man, you know. Uh, but the business survives off the regular Joes, you know what I'm saying, that save their chips and uh, come through. And, and those guys, you know, obviously they get the red carpet and they, they we dictate around their schedule, you know. Awesome. Well, I'm going to have to, when I'm out in LA, I'm definitely going to come through and get a piece done. That's going yeah. to be amazing. But thank you for joining us, Mr. Cartoon on La Vida sure. Baseball. It's an honor to have you on and keep representing thank us the way that you have been. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Appreciate you.